Okay. All right. You ready to do some search and rescue training? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, so we're out at our adventure spot, and uh, we're working on some search and rescue training. We have uh, two German short hair pointers out here. One's about maybe 14 weeks old, and one's maybe six or seven months old. We got Chunk, who's an awesome chocolate Labrador. And we're fixing to uh, just move over here into our creek, and uh, we're, we're gonna work on some in basic environmental socialization. And uh, like uh, Charlotte's gonna be my helper today. She's gonna climb up and like put herself in some awkward positions, and the dogs are gonna like find her, get close to her. So now the key here is I do not have my mentor dog with me today. So it'll be a little harder keeping up with these puppies. And the reason that we left uh, Mr. No Name and Hunter at home uh, is because like everybody always says, well, Stoney, what would it look like if you didn't have those other dogs with you? It's harder. I'm gonna be the first one to admit. Like, so if you guys are out there and you're doing dog training and you don't have any mentor dogs, it is harder, but it's by no means so hard that you can't do it. Okay, you just might have to put a little bit more labor into keeping up with the dogs. So the first thing with environmental socialization is this, like just go out and have fun, guys. You know, there are interesting spots all around the world, right? You just go, you know, you're going to your cul-de-sac and uh, there's a little drainage ditch that uh, doesn't get mowed very often. To your dog, that's like a trip to Africa, you know? So don't, uh, don't overthink this environmental socialization stuff. Just get out, get moving and uh, do interesting things. And remember, just because you're bored with where you live, doesn't mean your dog's bored with where you live. And that's super important. That's a, one of the most important things to remember. You know, because like before I had this spot, you guys can go back. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, on YouTube. I didn't used to have a big adventure spot like this. You know, it's just over the years, I've developed a really nice kennel and a really nice system for raising puppies. And so people have come here and it's, you know, my family's been fortunate. And so we were able to develop a big dog training uh, facility like this. But before that, you know, I lived in a townhouse with three crazy dogs. <laughs> and uh, I would just ride my bicycle all over Lexington, Kentucky, finding interesting places. Right there where everybody else, they'd walk past. And you just find hidden gems everywhere you go if you look hard enough. Isn't that right, Charlotte? Yeah. Every cloud has a silver line. So we're just out walking around, letting the dogs kind of do what they want to do. Uh, but we're going to practice on, you know, them not going too far away. So I've kind of lost one back there. Cameraman, run, go back there and see what that dog's doing. Just turn around and go back there. Now, <laughs> different guys, I mean, different dogs guys are gonna respond to your attempts at environmental socialization in different ways. So this little dog's name is Kimber. And uh, <laughs> like, from her perspective, like, uh, she doesn't need any environmental socialization. She was born to do this type of activity. So I did. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything to encourage Kimber to uh, go up there and start climbing on that old log. You know, that's pretty amazing, really. She's just a fantastic puppy. Uh, I'm kind of thinking about telling her owners that she ran off and, you know, keeping her for myself. But if you're super lucky, guys, that's what your environmental socialization looks like. You just go out and the dog uh, gets out of the car and says, wow, this is, this is the greatest adventure I've ever seen. I'm just ready to party. And they just take off and they start climbing and, and investigating and doing fun stuff. And then some of your dogs, uh, you know, they're gonna have a little harder time. Some of them, like Milo, I've lost Milo. He's run off somewhere, so we gotta try to call him back. <coughs> Milo! Come on, Milo! Uh, some of your dogs are going to have a tendency to wander a little bit farther uh, with those guys. You know, if you don't have a super secure location to, to adventure with them, then you'll need to keep them on uh, a long line. Now, what we did with Milo uh, when we first started bringing him over here was we brought him over here on a long line. You know, kind of establish some uh, basic, uh, you know, distance metrics and, and uh, work on our recalls and stuff. Okay. Now, one of the things you'll notice that's different today, uh, you know, where I have these two German short hair pointers and Chunk, Chunk's gonna have a tendency to stay closer to me. And if I had my Labrador retrievers over here who stay close, they would suck these German short hair pointers in. So always keep in mind what kind of dog you have because the type of dog you have will, uh, it's gonna have a lot to do with how you set up your adventure session. If you have a dog that's bred to stay close to a handler and do a, a complex job in conjunction with a handler, like a retriever or a herding dog, well then you're not gonna have to watch them as close in terms of, uh, their, of your distance management. They're not gonna go too far away. 
if you have uh, you know uh, like a general purpose hunting dog like a like a German short hair pointer but it's a, you know it's mainly a bird dog it's going to want to go away from you it doesn't plan on going too far away but depending on the situation that you're in not going too far away can still be kind of over in the danger zone uh, if you have a terrier you got to be really careful in areas like this because uh, Sometimes a terrier will see a hole, like a little cave or, or like a, a hole under a log or something, and they're just so brave and so game that they'll just dive off into that hole, and going in is a lot easier than coming out, so they can get stuck. So, like, think about that, you know. Think about uh, the possible problems that you can have related to, you know, your breed's individual um, breed-specific characteristics, both uh, mentally and physically. It's very important. Okay. Now the other thing that you want to think about is you want to make sure you stay safe. So don't do anything that uh, you're not uh, physically, you know, kind of prepared to do. Now my dogs are getting away from me a little way, so I'm going to call them. Here dogs! Now when I call them, I'm going to get up here on these rocks. Now this is a really low traction environment, guys. This, uh, this, this, these rocks, they just kind of fall off here. And so it can be dangerous, okay, so be really careful. At my kennel, we have a pre-adventure area, and so we teach these dogs how to have good proprioception, and we uh, acclimate them to a broad range of physical conditions while they're young, so that when we come over to the, uh, our actual adventure area, you know, they're already kind of pre-adapted. And I just come out here and I start walking, you know. Now I have Charlotte with me, and Charlotte's young, and even though Charlotte has been raised in an environment like this i have to make choices that take into consideration you know like her physical and, and mental characteristics so right along there uh it's a little bit too you know kind of a little bit too shady for charlotte but as we move down here the rocks get bigger and flatter so charlotte you can go on down there and get up on the rocks and uh, so stay on kind of the bigger safer ones and then when she gets down there she can kind of give the dogs feedback you know now, you know, just like I talk about developing proprioception in the dogs, okay, we gotta get kids out. You guys, if you have kids, take them out and go on adventures. If you don't have any children, uh, you know, look around your neighborhood. See if for some kid that, uh, you know, the parents just locking them up and, and feeding them Netflix all day and take them on a little adventure, it's fun. The whole world would be better off if uh, people, you know, spent a little bit more time outside with their neighbors. Good, very nice. All right, now Charlotte, when those dogs come up there, be sure to give them some love. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, now, so we're going to come off of this low traction environment. And we're going to get back in the water. Now, what you're going to see in like all my videos, the whole history of my videos, is that we do, we, we socialize dogs in the broadest range of environments. Okay, so we teach dogs a basic vocabulary, and then we teach them how to implement, uh, you know, to combine that vocabulary with their physical skills in the face of physical impediments. We do the the bulk of that at the kennel in terms of establishing a foundation. Then it's just a matter of coming out here in the real world, and putting uh, what we worked on at the kennel into a more diverse environment. So the dogs are out and up a little way. So I'm gonna call them. Well, first come up here, cameraman. See if you can see what Kimber's doing. I don't know if you'll be able to see her because she's kind of the color of the environment up there. But I'll call them. Hey dogs! Hey dogs! Come on Kimber, you can do it! Now going up guys is always easier than coming down. So sometimes like if your dog climbs up a hill or something, like they might have a little bit of trouble coming down. Uh, back up cameraman because I want to show them specifically what not to do. If your dog gets up a hill, uh, don't come down here and be like this. You ever seen the cat in the tree thing where like the cat climbs the tree and they have to you know call the fire department? Well one thing you'll notice is that you've never actually seen a cat skeleton in a tree. So in other words if a cat can get up a tree, a cat can get down a tree. Okay, they don't come down the tree because you're looking at them funny. You're going, hey, come here, come here, kitty, 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 kitty. It's weird. I call it the weird guy at the park problem, right? Imagine you're a little kid and, and got weird guy at the park. It's like, come here, come here, little kid. Come here. Oh, hey, come here. Let me rub your face. You know, it's weird. Right? So don't do that. If a dog gets up there and they seem to be having some trouble, you know, getting down, uh, you've got two decisions to make. One, you just go up there and get them. Okay. Uh, I generally don't recommend that. Or two, you just start walking away. That way, there's no pressure on the dog and you walking away kind of puts a pulling effect into play and they'll come down. 
Uh, another thing you can do is you can just like anticipate those problems. Like see if I got to walk up here through all these spider webs. So I'm gonna walk up here and I'm gonna actually practice coming up and going down. That way I can have some input into the path that the dogs choose. Very nice. Oh my gosh, you're the very good dogs. And they come up here and I say appreciate it, give them a little treat. Remember guys, a treat is a physical manifestation of your pleasure. A treat is not a sufficient um, reward or motivator to get dogs to do hard things, right? The treat is just a, a sign that you're super, super happy with them, right? And I'm gonna lead by example. See, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna come under this log. I'm gonna come down this little ravine. Very nice. And then we're gonna be back on our way. Very good dogs. Come on, come on. Come on, dogs. Very good dogs. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, I don't know if the camera picks it up well, but when you're out adventuring and doing environmental socialization, you have a lot of decisions to make. Charlotte, show them how, like you can walk right along. See how this right here, this is all smooth. That rock over there is all smooth. And like your natural tendency is to take the path of least resistance, right? So you just walk on the smooth rock, okay? You gotta be sure, okay, to get over here and walk in the bigger rocks and rock, walk in the sediment, okay? Because each one of these surfaces here are different. So we have this up here, and this part of the rock doesn't keep water on it all the time. So there's kinda, kinda got some moss on it, and there's quite a bit of traction. Then you go from that, look, we got kinda some, like loose sediment and rocks and some of these rocks can be a little sharp and it takes the dogs uh, you know uh, quite a few outings to develop a proper pad toughness to deal with that okay and we go straight from that into these larger rocks okay and the thing with these larger rocks is what happens is the dogs have to learn to kind of as they're walking through here to see which of these rocks can bear their weight and how their feet are going to slide here let me show you cameraman look here you see this okay so if you don't, if you always take the path of least resistance, then what happens is your dogs don't learn about this. And then when you take them on vacation, you know, you're at a national park, you're in Alaska or somewhere, okay, they don't know, and maybe there's not where you are, this nice smooth section. And they have to walk through these larger rocks that are strewn about kind of randomly. And if they're not used to it, they can slip and stick a pad right here, catch a joint, then you get a soft tissue injury. Sometimes you actually get a broken bone. And it can all be prevented uh, just by, you know, thinking proactively. Very nice. Okay, Charlotte, let's go. We keep coming up this way. Oh, it's a very good dog. Now, so Kimber, now you notice, like the smallest dog here, the little skinniest dog here is the most adventurous. And that'll let you kind of let you in on a little thing that you need to know is that you, you can't judge a book by its cover because like Kimber looks like a dainty lady. Okay, but she's by far in she she's by far the toughest dog that we have out here with us. Let's see. Kimber, come on. So here comes Chunk. Here comes Milo. And the dainty lady is off hunting. Come on, Kimber, you can do it. Oh, now you see that? <laughs> that's what I'm talking about like you when I say you can't judge a book by its cover I mean you can't judge a book by its cover like I'm gonna deal with that you know I'm gonna take I'll probably come back over here tomorrow and put her on a leash and work on like uh, like like you're coming off that bank with it in a little more controlled manner oh my gosh crazy dogs everywhere there's crazy dogs around here what'd you find a rock, a rock? Yeah. <laughs> I mean was it a special rock or <laughs> Is it a fossil rock? No. No? Pretty. Just a pretty rock? Okay. Well, that's cool. Beauty is where you find it. And there goes Kimber back up the thing. It's funny. Don't you think that's funny, Charlotte, how like people would probably think that Chunk is the toughest dog out here, and he's the, he's the softest. Now, it's all kinds of minnows in here and crawdads. The dogs will get after those guys all the time. But regardless of what you plan on doing later, if you're just going to go hiking sometimes, if you're going to go on uh, you know, boating trips, if you're going to do search and rescue work, therapy dog work, whatever it is, guys, there's, just, there's no arguing the fact that getting out here 
and uh, properly socializing the dogs are going to have a big benefit because mental and physical development uh, arise due to stressors, right? And so every time a dog, like Sh or Charlotte, a child, steps on a rock and that rock is a little bit unbalanced or they get their feet wet or they, uh, you know, they run into a, a briar bush or something, all of those things that you try so hard to avoid, okay, those are the things that teach the dogs to be resilient, to th teach them to have character, you know? So now we're going to get in the water and get the dogs in the uh, kayak. Hey, dogs! Now, I anticipate my kayak work to go something like this. Uh, Chunk and Kimber will want to get in there, probably. They want us to go swimming. And Milo's going to be a little hesitant. So I'll let the cameraman go position herself up on the bank a little bit. Okay, and we'll see what's going to happen. Now, Chunk's been doing this a little longer. So, oh, look, there comes Milo. Hey, if I get real lucky, Milo's just going to swim right across here with me. Come on, Milo. Up, oh, he went back to the bank. All right. So we got a little work to do with Milo. Let me come over here. Get my kayak. Okay, come on. You want to step into it? Okay. All right. So now this is uh, Princess Tours Incorporated. So I have my first princess in here. And then I'm going to try to get to my second princess, Kimber. Come on, Kimber. Come here, babies. What you doing? Oh, my gosh. And here comes Kimber. Now, the odds of Kimber actually staying in this kayak are pretty low. But we're going <laughs> to, you know what I ought to do probably just to be smart. Throw me a leash there, Claire. Kimber is so adventurous that uh, uh, I think she's going to turn my kayaking lesson into a swimming lesson which we'll let her do that in a minute but right now we're going to work on just riding around in the kayak all right Charlotte, i'll put a leash on her so you can hold her now remember whether you're going on a vacation or you're going to go do some search and rescue group work or you're just preparing for the next uh, biblical flood your dog needs to learn how to ride in a boat okay you got kimber all right now i'm just going to get down in here now here's the thing guys I've been working with Chunk quite a bit on going and finding Charlotte. So I'm gonna ignore Chunk and I'm gonna see if at some point that he doesn't get in here and try to get in the kayak with Charlotte. <laughs> Where would you like to go, princess? Oh, we have so many fish in here nowadays. Big fish. Oh my gosh, very nice. Uh-oh, looky here. This is what I was hoping would happen. We'll come over here a little ways. And look at ah! <laughs> Chunk says, let me in there. Now this is why we call him Chunk though. He's uh, super motivated, but uh, <laughs> he's a little bit on the he's a little bit on the, the chunky side when it comes to being coordinated. Very nice. Very nice. That's perfect. Okay, now since we have Chunk in the boat, what we're going to do is we're going to see... <laughs> I was going to say we're going to see if Kimber wants to have a little swimming lesson. Okay, all right. So, let me see. We're going to go... Come on, Swimmer. So we're going to go over here, Charlotte, and then I'm going to let you out of the boat, and you're going to stay on the bank, and you're going to turn from a princess in a boat to a princess in distress, and you're going to, you're going to call the dogs to you. So I'll move you right up here to the bank. You get off the bank, off on the bank. Come on, Chunk. Very nice. Then we'll go over here. We're not gonna go too far, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna let Kimber out, and we're gonna see if she'll go to you. Uh, first, call Chunk. See if you can get Chunk to come. Come here, You can do it, Chunk. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Now we're gonna let Kimber out. I'm gonna leave her leash on her in case I need to get her. 
Let's see if she can go find Chunk. Now Kimber says, let me back in the boat. Another princess in distress. <laughs> so I'm gonna help Princess, I'm gonna help Princess Kimber here and help her understand how to swim over here to find Charlotte. You can do it. Very nice. Now again, we're talking about multiple kinds of environmental socialization. We have riding in the boat, we have swimming, then they're going from wet, slippery rocks, uh, gravel and sediment to being up here uh, on a dry surface, but that is uh, uh, really pretty low to moderate traction, okay? So now I'm gonna come back this way. Come on, Kimber. And look, Kimber's putting the brakes on. So I'm just gonna come back over here and get her. Good. Put her in the water. Come on, Kimber, you can do it. You can do it, come on. Come on, Chunk, show her how it's done. Very nice. Big progress. Woo! That in a little deep. Very nice. Now, if you're gonna teach a dog to get in a kayak, the very first few chances where like they're not good swimmers yet, that's your best chance to get them like really motivated to get back in the kayak because they're like, let me back in, let me back in. Once they become really good swimmers, they don't want to get in a kayak that much. You know, like my dog, No Name, he'll swim beside a canoe in the river for hours. Now Kimber's thinking she's going to go the other way, but we're going to go back over here, find Princess Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte, call Chunk again. And there goes Chunk. And if Chunk needs a little reassurance, I'll be like, okay, Chunk, go ahead. Come on, Chunk. You can do it. Go find Charlotte. Good. Very nice. Kimber's thinking about going the other way, so I just get her, put her back on the bow, right here. Okay, call Kimber, Charlotte. So look, I'm going to help Kimber off. Good, I'm going to give her some guidance with the leash. We're going to go from shallow to a little bit deeper, just so she gets a few strokes of swimming in, and then right up the bank. Very nice. We'll try to get one more repetition. Come on, Kimber. And look, so Kimber right here says, no, I'm not doing it. Well, I'm not gonna battle with her a lot. I just come over here and I'll get her. And then I'm gonna put her a little bit in kind of the deeper water and point her towards the kayak. And then she'll go, oh, okay, well that's, you know, that's where the safe spot is. Give her a little help. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And then she sees the kayak. That represents safety to her. So she wants to get right in. Okay, Chunk. The chunk that just represents, <laughs> uh, who knows, partying, I guess. Okay. All right, and there's a basic uh, environmental socialization session uh, for, for swimming, uh, for kayaking, for going and finding somebody in a search and rescue situation. Uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Chunk, you can go too. Uh, go on, Chunk. Oh. And now I got to go back over here and get the real princess. Okay, princess, your ride you. has arrived. Thank you very much. Okay, Whoa. now turn around facing the other way. There you go. Okay, now are you done or do you want to do one more dog? We'll do Milo. Uh, let's do Milo. Okay, we can do Milo. Okay, so guys, Milo, uh, he got started a little bit later in life, and uh, like a lot of short hairs, He'll probably eventually like getting in the water quite a bit, but uh, in the beginning stages, he struggles with it a little bit. Oh, so I'll go over here and get my <laughs> All right. Now, so if you're getting started a little bit later in life and you don't have a lot of, you know, what happens is people are always asking me, hey, Tony, what's the best dog training, you know, to do for this activity? Well, you got to remember, you can't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. And so, like, I'd like to have Milo for six months where I could just kind of gradually desensitize him to being in the creek and being in the river by bringing him with my dogs. He would just eventually settle in. But I don't have him for that long. So, uh, like I said, we can't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. So, I'm just going to put him in these situations. Uh, and I'm going to use a leash so that I can control him. I'll put Charlotte in the boat with him so that he feels a little bit more secure. Uh, 
Now, does it feel like he's getting, like he's all by himself? And you might say, well, Stoney, why don't you just get in there with them? Well, uh, you can do it that way. I mean, you can just get in the kayak and take off kayaking, but then if the dog gets out uh, or causes trouble or dumps you in the water, what I've found over the years is people get really frustrated and they lose their temper with the dogs and turn the whole thing into a negative experience. And then you don't want to take them kayaking anymore. They don't want to go kayaking anymore. And so I just find that it's a little bit better to put in the work up front, you know, and uh, kind of let the dogs realize that uh, the whole activity is pretty fun. Now, so Milo's worried right here, right? There's water down in here. It's a little bit nervous, but uh, it'll be okay. Very nice. Now, what this should kind of show you too, guys, is that you got a little bit of the difference in just getting started. The earlier you get started with all your dog training, the better. And, you know, never let anything get in the way of early training. You know, people will lock their dogs up in their yards so much now and they don't take them outside because they have fears of pathogens. It's like the whole world has been convinced that you know you got to have 25 vaccinations to, to go outside of your yard. You got to remember the guy down the road he just got a puppy right okay and he's in his yard so his yard's safe and your yard's safe but the yards in the middle ain't safe. Come on let's not do that. Socialization is vaccination for the mind. Never forget that. So the amount of work that I'm having to put in with Milo, I don't have to put that much work in with Kimber. Now, partly that's because they're different dogs, different bloodlines, but mainly it's because Kimber has been with me from a younger age and uh, you know, the dogs learn better when they're younger. Very nice. A little bit of time here. Just kind of going back. We'll send him over here towards the cameraman. Very nice, Milo. Oh, Milo, a good boy. He's a good boy. Now, if you're going to pet a dog in a situation like this, you know, you wait to see like times where they're acting a little bit more confident, a little bit more relaxed. And then when you pet them, pet them with a nice solid hand, a nice stroke. Don't pat them and get them excited. If you go to patting them here, they're going to jump out of the boat. Okay, now we're going to introduce some turns, just some lazy turns. Go sideways a little bit. Now, as Milo gains confidence, right, like if I had more time, then like every day I would rock the boat a little bit and I would turn the boat a little bit, you know. But if I don't have enough time, I just do it a little more, you know. And uh, I just force that adaptation a little bit more quickly. So we do a few spins. Now we're gonna do a few boat rocks. And listen guys, this right here, uh, I used to not stress this enough and I would get an endless stream of emails of Stoney my dog was doing great in the canoe until the big power boat went by and uh, then when, when the dog felt this they jumped out capsized the whole canoe so this is another reason I like to stand outside of the boat because if I need to stop that I can stop it immediately versus being in the boat where I can't stop it immediately you might, I'll, I'll turn up Milo around so you can see. He might not look super, look super confident right there. <laughs> it's like a wild west ride. Yeah, good. Not do, it's a kayak. Right, we're not gonna do too much though. Okay, that's very good. All right, now we'll go over here to Princess Island. Okay, now what we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit different this time. Is I'm gonna let the prince. Milo out and Princess Charlotte out. Okay, now Charlotte, get his leash and see if maybe he'll come to you. If not, I'll help you. Okay, get him up there. Come on, Milo, get out there with Charlotte. Very nice. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this long line and I'm gonna try to go across uh, the creek here and I'll have the cameraman back up and I'm gonna see if I can call Milo to me. And I might be able to, I might not. We'll just have to wait and see. If not, I'll come over here and huh? come over here and get them. <laughs> oh, 
that's not working very well. Uh huh. Okay. So I'm going to back up a little bit here. And, you know, in a perfect world, I would just call Milo and he would take off swimming and he would swim because basically what's going to happen is he's going to walk. Then he's going to get to a neutral buoyancy point where he just starts to have some lift. You know, it's like not really floating. He's not really standing on the ground exactly. Uh, then he's going to have to come through a little deeper part and swim to me. So it starts off easy, gets hard, and ends up easy. And that's always a good, when you're doing environmental socialization, that's a good thing to remember. Kind of easy, hard, easy. All right, Charlotte, watch out. I don't want to pull you. Come on, Milo. Scoot out of the way just a little bit there, Charlotte. Milo, come on, dude. You can do it. Very nice. Now, I'm not using the long line to pull him to me. I use the long line to guide him or to stop, uh, stop him from going away. But I'm not actually going to just drag him to me. Come on, Milo. You're a very good dog. You can do it. Very nice. So easy. And it's going to get a little harder. Right there. It's a little harder. Very nice. Good. Okay, then I'm going to change. Now see right here, this is where the long line comes in play. He, you know, Milo is inside, he's just going to go get out of the creek. I'm like, nope, not getting out of the creek yet, dude. Come on, dude, you can do it. Milo! Come on, Milo! Oh, very good. Very good dog. You see that right there? That's called water beating. And what that comes from is like... The dogs don't understand that they can drive with their back feet and they're just reaching out. As soon as they, as soon as they start driving with their back feet a little bit, then they'll be swimming and they'll realize it's not really a big deal. Very nice. Now, as far as why I actually get in here with the dogs, just labor, guys. If I, come on, Milo. If, 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 if I try to do this from the bank, just no way to get the dogs to, to make the amount of progress I need them to make on, on my given timeline. Come on, dude, you can do it. There we go, good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Now I'm gonna try to maneuver myself, trying to get him to where he'll go at an angle through this deeper part of the creek without me having to get my shorts completely soaked that might not be going to happen, though. This is the angle I'd like to get right here. This right here is a perfect angle. Come on, come on. Milo, come on, dude. You can do it. Milo, come on. He says, I'm going to go that way, Stoney. I'm like, no, dude, come right across there. Come on. There we go. That's what I needed. See, now he's driving a little bit with his back end. That's what I needed right there. Very good dog. Okay, so that's not perfect, but that's progress. That's much better than what I got last time. And so, since it's much better than what I got last time, we're going to call that a successful session. We'll let Milo get back in the Princess Cruise Lines here. Okay, Princess, let me hold your hand there. Very nice. All right. Milo wants to get in here with the Princess. And we'll come back over here. We'll get just a little bit of boat cruising in. Do a couple of turns. Good. Very nice. Oh, one more turn and then we'll let Milo out. And we'll let the princess out and we'll go find something else fun to do. 
We've had a super awesome environmental socialization session up to this point. We did a great creek walk where we got the dogs tons of toes to nose stimulation, right? Getting their bodies and their minds working in synergy, making sure that we challenge them and uh, ensuring proper development. We did a little bit of swimming, a little bit of kayaking, and that was super fun, super awesome, okay? And we're gonna end our session with a game of hide and seek. Now, uh, the way I play hide and seek when I'm doing this kind of foundation training, uh, it's kind of uh, has an element of an old fashioned exercise called a restrained recall. So I have my assistant uh, over there holding these three puppies and I'm going to get them excited, talk to them kind of excitedly, then I'm going to run away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over there and I'm going to go into the wood line right beside that old tree there. But once I get in the wood line, I'm going to cut off and uh, move to, from your perspective, it'll be to the right, about 30 yards out on the right, and I'm gonna hide. Then my assistant is going to uh, release the dogs, and then when they come and they find me, okay, now theoretically what they should do is they should go to the last point where they see me, and then they should start using their nose to figure out where I went, okay? When they come to find me, right as they get up on me, I'm gonna burst out of the wood line and I'm gonna run a circle, I'm gonna play with them and love on them a lot, okay? So what I'm trying to do is imprint on them the idea that uh, going in the woods and looking for somebody is a super fun, super awesome experience. No pressure. You know, I'm not gonna, not gonna, not, I'm not gonna expect anything other than for these dogs to have fun. And if they're having fun, they'll try really, really hard. Okay, so first I gotta get them really excited. Oh my gosh, give me puppies, what are your puppies doing? What are your puppies doing? You know, talk to them real nice. And I'm gonna take off running. Ah. Now if I don't come out of these woods, <laughs> it's cause I had a heart attack. <laughs> but I'm gonna go, oh right here, right before I disappear. Y'all call them again. Now y'all might be able to hear them barking over there. I gotta be really quick. And then I'm gonna come up in the woods. I'm gonna make my deer trail. You gotta be super, super stealthy here. Okay. And now I'm staged where I can kind of monitor what's going on. And here the dogs come. I gotta be really quiet. All right, so let's see. I can kind of see what's going on here. They're looking around, I hear them coming. Up oh, here they come, they're getting close. There's Chunk. Okay, now they've caught me. Oh my gosh! Oh, look at these good dogs! Now I'm gonna run, run. Oh my gosh! There's some good dogs! Oh, there's some good dogs! Oh my gosh! And I'm gonna love on them. Oh my gosh, there's the best dogs! <laughs> They're the best dogs. Oh, I love these babies. Oh, I love these babies so much. Oh, they're so fun dogs. They're the funnest dogs I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, they rescued me, cameraman. They rescued me. They love Uncle Stoney. <laughs> and Kimber loves my treats. <laughs> All right, now I'm tired, so I do have to see you some point in the future. Maybe next week. <sighs> that was a good session, cameraman.